What's up survivors, I'm Natural Born, and in today's video we're going to be looking at 5 different horde bases for the console version of 7 Days to Die. Now I do want to point out that these aren't flawless, perfect, or even finished. The main goal of this video is to show you guys different aspects that you can put into different horde bases, and I want you guys to take different elements from each and use them to create your very own ultimate horde base. But without further ado, first up on the list is the Polem Wedge Tip Base. Now if any of you follow my Let's Play, you'll know that this is the first Horde base that we built in that world. In my personal opinion, it is one of the best. I actually use it in my main world too, but more of an alpha version. Now the thing with these Horde bases is you can expand them as far as you want. You could put, you could put 50 spikes out around the entire thing if you really wanted to. I left everything quite bare for this video, just to give you guys a fair idea of what you can do. Now, the best thing about this base is we've got wedge tips down here and poles here. Now what happens when zombies run into it, is it pushes their hitbox out, and then they can't hit anything. Now, when you cover this whole thing in spikes, you'll end up with crawlers. Same deal with the crawlers, the crawlers can't really hit anything but they will pile on top of each other and they can slither their way into the base. If you're quick with your melee weapon, then it's not an issue. Another thing that I want to point out is each of these bases have been made with different materials purely for the purpose of the video. I highly recommend if you build any horde base in this game, use the best resource that is available to you. Now the reason that we have these spikes up the side of the building is to stop those pesky spider zombies. They will climb up here, they'll be stopped by the frames, and the spikes will kill them. Now, ideally for these bases, you want to build yourself a small hatch frame into a wee tunnel system to take you inside of the base, but for this one, we made ourselves a wooden staircase. We're going to climb up these frames, we're going to jump over to the top, now, with these frames, as I've mentioned in one of my tips and tricks videos, there's certain blocks that you're able to shoot through. So you can stand up here, you can get your bow and arrow with your guns, and you can shoot all the zombies that are piling up there. You can also use this as a way to get down inside of the base. Now, this is where you're going to spend most of your time. This base in particular is mainly a melee base, but as I just mentioned, it can be used for range as well. You can have storage along this wall. Like I said, you're better off using the best material available to you. If you build this out of concrete, I highly recommend making wall safes and sticking those into the wall. So that way if a cop does puke in here, then they're going to be able to withstand the damage. But yeah guys, this is hall base number one, the pole and wedge tip. And all you do is you take your melee weapons, you can hit through the gaps. As I mentioned, you can have as many traps as you want. Log spikes, wooden spikes, barbed wire fence, and yeah, so that's pretty much all there is to this base. So what we're going to do now, is we're going to head over to base number 2, and that brings us on to the second horde base of the video, and that is the Pillar 50 base. Now these ones are really good for using melee weapons, I put a few spikes down just to give you guys a fair idea of what you can do over here, and same deal, you could have 10 rows of spikes coming out to here if you really wanted to. The thing with Pillar 50 is zombies can damage this, but you can melee them through the side as well. Now, as long as, long as you've got materials on your character for repairs, carry a hammer or a nail gun with you, and you can just repair it as you go. Now, we've done the same deal over here. We've got our cobblestone frames as a staircase. We're going to jump over to the top. Now instead of frames this time, I used iron grates as an example. Same deal here, spider zombies can't get past them, and you can actually shoot through them. You can shoot through them with the crossbow, the bow and arrow, and any of the firearms. So yeah, if we head downstairs, then yeah, you can see exactly how this works. You just hit the zombies through here. As I mentioned, zombies will hit these poles, but you just repair them as you go and keep dealing out their damage. Now, for the purpose of space inside of here, instead of using full blocks, as you can see here, I've used plates. Now, you can place plates down. 
you can get ladders up the back of them. One of the big reasons you want these plates here is if you have to retreat to the top and you've got cops shooting at you, then these are at least going to protect you from three sides. We also have some supply crates, some storage crates, sorry, down in the floor. So that way you can uh, store that juicy loot when you're killing all these zombies. Now these two horde bases here are really good for collecting all of the loot that you may get. A few of these other bases... They don't work as well when you're trying to uh, collect all of the loot, but they will definitely keep you alive. Alright, on to the third base. Now this one is more of a mini pitfall. So, as you can see, this whole area here, you can lay as many spikes down, barbed wire, any form of trap that you want. I left this open so we could come have a wee look from the top. Now as you can see, this is five blocks deep. We have some spikes down here that are upside down. Zombies are going to fall on those spikes. We will be on the inside. Now the way that we're going to get there is we had to dig a tunnel for this one. We're going to open up the hatch frame. Get down into the tunnel. And yeah, so what happens is the zombies will run in here. They'll fall down here onto the spikes. Same deal as Pillar 50. Now, as you can see, these ones are made out of iron. Unfortunately, that block is not available to us in survival mode. But, as I, as I mentioned, all of these bases were crafted with different resources. This one's made out of iron. Now, the best thing about this being three wide is that you can repair any of these spikes. You can loot anybody that falls in here. Now, I personally like this style of base to use as a screamer farm. You can load forges up everywhere, turn them on, Screamer's going to fall in, she's going to call in a horde, and you just let that horde keep piling in, and you just deal with them as they fall in. Now another thing that you can do, is you can break out, you know, a couple blocks there, and you can start digging yourself extra rooms. So you know, you could have doors, this can be your combat area, because obviously, you will have infected police officers fall down here, they will be spewing through the bars. You want to take them out as quick as possible. You don't want to have your workbench and all your storage sitting here. You can uh, put storage in the floors. You can put it in the walls if you want to. As I mentioned, you can dig extra rooms and have all of your storage in there. But yeah, so this is the mini pitfall. And yeah, like I said, I, I quite like these ones for screamer farms. This is something that I'm contemplating building in my Let's Play world and using that as a screamer farm. But we're going to head back upstairs, onto the fourth horde base. Can we make the jump? Oh, lucky. All right. Now, this style of horde base, as you can see, zombies will run in here. We've actually had an animal fall in here. Zombies will run in here, they'll land on the spikes, and you'll shoot them from up above. Now, if anybody builds this one, I recommend building it in one block more. The reason that we have a big gap there is because it can't handle the weight. Now, I've got this staircase here. Zombies may be able to path back up it, but they will probably turn around and run back in. The main reason, so we can get down here, we can harvest any loot, we can repair any spikes. Then we can just pick our frames back up, and then back up the top. Now this here is the wooden fence. As you can see, we're in Navis Gain at the moment. We're in my creative world. But in my main world, this is where my main base is. And something I've noticed with these wooden fences, is zombies can't seem to break them, can't seem to jump them. They just get stuck across them. So we've got those covering up our ladder. We can climb up our ladder and get up the top here. Now, with this middle section being open, I highly recommend being careful. You do not want to fall down there, because, yeah, you'll be pretty much as good as dead. But, these these here are upgraded iron grates. Same deal, we can shoot through them. Now, I suppose the bonus with having the hole here, is you can throw pipe bombs and molotovs down there too. Now, when digging a base like this, you don't have to upgrade all the walls to concrete. All you need is your poles coming up. They don't have to be four wide either. Like I said, I uh, built this one a bit too wide. Had a few problems when I was putting down the grates. But it worked out well in the end, because like I said, you can use this for explosives. Just chuck them in there. And yeah, I covered all the walls in concrete, because as I said, we've got wood. 
cobblestone, iron, so this one had to be concrete. And yeah, like I said, you don't have to copy these designs exactly. Use this video as an opportunity to take different elements from each base. Maybe take an element from each base, combine them into your very own Ultimate Horde base. But yeah, guys. Now, you could probably, if you wanted to, you could have ladders in each of these corners. And you could have these set up here too. I don't know how well zombies will path around. But that's the joys of being able to run around this whole thing. You could also pop some grates around the sides here. I didn't actually do that, but I should have. Because that's going to stop spider zombies from climbing up. You could also even line these with barbed wire all the way to the top. Now, last on our list is the floating horde base. So anybody who does follow along with the Let's Play, this is pretty much a smaller version of what you're going to see for the aerial assault base. Now the trick with the floating horde bases, as you can see here, we have plates. And what happens is you can walk straight through these. Now ferals, being three blocks high, they're probably going to get stuck on one. But providing you're running around up here, they're not going to stay in that spot for too long. They're going to be trying to get to you. Now the thing that I like about this base in my Let's Play, I will be covering this entire bottom section with the landmines, all of that good stuff. We will actually leave certain holes open where we can throw pipe bombs through, shoot rocket launchers, all of that good stuff. Use the same trick here with the fences. So we can jump over, we can get to our ladder, we can climb up the top. Now if we need to, we can shoot through any part of this base. Now the best thing about this base is you do not need to have iron bars up here. You could have full blocks. You could build yourself a floating castle if you really wanted to. Then you could hide from the horde. Providing you don't have cops that can see you, then they won't be spitting their spew at you. But yeah, as I mentioned, same with the frames, same with the iron grates, same with the upgraded iron grates, and same with the iron bars. You can shoot through all of these. So this one, as you can tell, is not a melee horde base. It is purely for ranged. You know, you could pop a bit of storage right up there in the middle. I probably wouldn't put any storage on the outsides, just in case you have cops spewing at them. But yeah, you could uh, pop a storage chest right here. You can load that up with ammo. And yeah, this is where you can fight off the horde. But yeah, guys, as I mentioned, none of these horde bases are quite perfect or flawless, but they do have their own strengths and weaknesses. Have a look at the designs. See if there's anything that stands out to you. Take those strengths and use it to create the ultimate horde base. And yeah, if you guys want to see a building tutorial for any of these bases, then let me know in the comments below. And on top of that, let me know what one of these bases was your favourite. But here guys, that about sums it up for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new. Hopefully you found something that sticks out to you about some of these bases. But as always, stay safe out there survivors, and I'll see you in the next one.